What's up guys, it's Sam here. Um, by the way, in previous comments, I saw people referring to me as Keep On Coding. Um, that's the channel name. My name is Sam. I don't know, it just felt weird when people were calling me Keep On Coding. Just wanted to clear that up. Anyways, uh, grad school. So last year I made a video explaining my computer science master's degree in like eight minutes. Hold on, let me look this up. All right, it was nine minutes. A lot of people in that comment section were asking me how I actually got into grad school, which really required a lot more hoops to jump through. Um, grad school is like, once you get in, you just take the classes that are needed and you do your thesis and then you're done. Getting into grad school was a journey of its own with a lot of uncertainty, especially with me having a bachelor's degree in international studies, a completely non-technical degree. So going from that to computer science was a big change. And to be honest, I had no idea if it was even gonna work out. So let me take you guys back to the beginning. It all started when I was working as a part-time teller at Bank of America in Los Angeles. I figured out pretty quickly that that wasn't something that I wanted to do for a career. To be honest, it was a pretty basic job. You kind of just do the same thing every day. I felt like a robot. I felt like I really needed to do something that challenged myself. After a lot of thought, I decided that I wanted to do a master's degree in computer science. It was a four-year plan, so two years trying to get into grad school, and then the program itself was another two years. And I decided to do a master's over a bachelor's because I already had a bachelor's, and I felt like getting another one would kind of undermine like the time and the money I spent getting that first one. So I just figured like, you know, I didn't want to make a lateral move. I wanted to move forward. So that's why I decided to go for the master's. So before I quit my job and, you know, like move back home with parents because I wasn't going to be making any money to pay rent, I needed to make sure two things. One, is this something that I would actually enjoy? I didn't want to leave one thing I hated to just do another thing that I hated. And two, was this actually something that I was capable of? Because I'd always heard that computer science was one of the hardest majors. And I'm someone that didn't have the best track record in school, like in high school or undergrad, like I don't even think I had a 3.0 in either of those. So initially I enrolled at Santa Monica College, which is a junior college in LA, and I took an online internet programming class. Looking back on it, it was a pretty basic class, just like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but I liked it and I did well and I was like, you know what, it's now or never, uh, let's go for it. So the following semester I took C++ and I took Calculus 2. C++ was not easy, but I don't know. I'm. I ended up liking it a lot. Uh, C++ was really like the first language I like. I got good at. Calculus, on the other hand, uh, I did not do that well. I got a W, as you can see, which stands for withdrawal, which means I had to drop the class in the middle of it because I ended up getting a D on the first midterm. So at that point, I was I was a little worried because uh, I was like, maybe the math portion of it is going to be too hard for me. Um, but I was like, you know what? We'll well, you know, let's wing it. Let's see what happens. So the next thing I did is I looked at a bunch of universities that I was potentially thinking about applying to. And I went to their website, looked at the prerequisites needed for their computer science master's programs. And it was kind of weird because not all the schools required the same thing. Some of them required you to finish all the prerequisites before you applied. Some of them were like, we'll let you in conditionally and then you can finish the classes while you're enrolled. What I did was I just went to like the main ones that I wanted to get into. I looked at which classes overlapped with one another. I put those all in a spreadsheet and I was like, okay, these are the classes that I'm gonna take over the next two years. So then I took all those classes and I was like, I'm gonna finish over two years or eight quarters. And then I mapped out exactly which class I was gonna take each quarter. because. Some of them were prerequisites to one another, so I kind of had to plan it out in a specific order. One of the issues is that most of these, or almost all of these classes were upper division. So they weren't classes that I could take at a junior college. I had to take them at an actual like four-year university. Luckily, when I did move back home, uh, there's a university called Cal State University East Bay, located in Hayward, California. And it was about 30 minutes away from my house, so it was not a bad commute. Now, I wasn't enrolled as a full-time student at this university, but what they did is they have a thing called Open University where anyone can just show up and take a class. The issue with this is one, it was $350 per unit, and each class is four units. So every class I wanted to take was like $1,400, which is not cheap. And secondly, you can't get into the class. You have to show up on the first day and hope there's enough room there. Luckily with this university, it wasn't too impacted or anything. So I was able to pretty much get all my classes. So the first class I decided to take was Calculus 2. Now I took Calc 1 like five years prior to this. So I was like, you know what? It, it had been such a long time. I need to really go back and relearn Calc 1. And the way I did this was really just looking up videos like on YouTube. 
Um, so I have to give a lot of credit to channels like Khan Academy and Patrick JMT. They really like helped me relearn Calc 1. And as you can see, uh, that helped me crush it in Calc 2. I got an, ended up getting an A. So that was like a huge weight off of my back. The following quarter, I ended up taking discrete structures, which um, it's basically like the intersection between math and computer science. So you're learning things like uh, set theory, um, graph theory. You're learning kind of about basic data structures. You're learning things about uh, like Boolean logic, cryptography. During spring quarter, I also decided to take assembly language, um, which was a prerequisite that I needed for computer architecture. This was an undergrad class, so I ended up taking this at Santa Monica College, but I was able to take it, since I wasn't close to the college anymore, I was able to take it online. And yeah, this is basically just an introduction to assembly language. You're kind of starting to learn how like CPU registers work. So um, yeah, good, good introduction to computer architecture. So the summer quarter of my first year, I ended up taking programming language concepts. This, I feel like this could have been a cool class, but I don't know, it was, have you guys ever had those professors that they kind of just show up and they just kind of like ramble and like talk about whatever they want. Uh, this is like what that class was like. I'm someone who learns better when we actually have like a specific subject, something that's a little bit more conceptual rather than something that's more abstract. But anyways, this class was learning about the different syntax and semantics of languages, different types of languages like imperative versus procedural versus functional. And then for the assignments, we had a just a bunch of different assignments that we had to do in different languages. This summer was also when I took the GRE or the graduate record examination, which is a standardized test that I, I'm pretty sure you need for like any grad program. So I studied for this for about two months. So there's a math section, a verbal section and a writing section. For computer science, they only care about the math section. So for the math prep, I ended up just going through this five pound book of GRE practice problems. Uh, it took me a couple months to get through, but that was pretty much all I needed for prep. For the verbal, all I did was really just go over these 500 essential words flashcards. I only got through like half of them. So my, my vocabulary from A to M was phenomenal. N through Z, not so much. I also ended up doing about 10 practice exams and I ended up taking the test one time and I ended up getting a 161 on the math portion, a 151 on the verbal and a four on the writing. Now, I was really just going for a 160, so I did do better than I wanted to, but I also felt like I could have done better. But I also didn't want to spend another four hours of my life taking the test. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to stick with the 161. All right, moving on to the following quarter, I realized that it was, it was time to step up my game. I needed to take three classes. Now, a little trick that I did was if I had done this as a open student, it would have been 12 units at $350, would have been $4,200 for that quarter. What I did was I just applied as an undergraduate student and I got in and I ended up just paying the set price for a quarter, which was probably around like $2,000. So just by doing that, I saved like two grand per quarter. So I don't know if I was technically allowed to do that, but hey, if not, I found a loophole. So the first class I took was data structures and algorithms, a pretty self-explanatory class. So we learned about linked lists, doubly linked lists, binary trees, heaps. We went a little bit over sorting algorithms. So overall, just, just a really good class to get your feet wet, feet wet with data structures and algorithms. The next class was Elements of Linear Algebra. Uh, I was trying my hardest to remember what we actually did in this class. It's, as you can see, it's been a while. I remember we just worked a lot with matrices and vectors and did a lot of like matrix, matrix or matrix math, but I don't really remember a lot from this class, to be honest. Next class was Intro to Probability Theory. Probability Theory, and this is, like most stat classes is they start out really easy and then they just get insanely hard. The thing about stats is it's it's mostly about knowing what formula to use and when to use it. And luckily for this class, uh, the professor gave us one sheet of blank paper that we could use to write notes on and bring to the exam. So I pretty much spent a couple of days writing as small as I possibly could, like every formula, all the notes from our classes. And then, I mean, that was the hard part. And then once you get to the test, you just look up what you need. So moving on to winter quarter, uh, I took computer architecture. So in this class, we learned about a lot about circuits, Boolean algebra. We use this program called LogicWorks to logically, and by, by logically, I mean, we just use software to build a 32-bit MIPS CPU. You learn a lot about CPU registers. Uh, you learn about how 
certain assembly instruction sets get converted down into binary and how the CPU processes that binary. The next class I took was Intro to Systems Programming. This was really learning a lot more about how the Unix and Linux operating systems work. You learn a lot about the command line. You do a lot of C programming using uh, system calls. Most of the assignments were basically just re-implementing Linux command line commands. Things like LS and PWD, we wrote those in C. Um, and a lot of it was just making a lot of those system calls. And then we also did some programs related to threading. So we used POSIX threads in C. And then finally, this introduction to recreation class, this was just like an easy online class that I needed to be qualified as a full-time student. All right, moving on to spring quarter. Uh, I took two classes, software engineering one. This didn't really have like a set curriculum to it. Pretty much the entire class was a group project that we had to work on. And for this class, it was really cool because they gave us the freedom to develop whatever we wanted. Our team decided on building a game using the Unity engine. So we decided to, if you've ever heard of the game Metal Slug, we ended up doing kind of like a clone of that, but then making it more of like a space theme. And we only had one level, but it was like, it was a cool game. Even the professor was like, this is probably the coolest project that anyone's done in this class. And then he proceeded by giving us a B plus. And I was kind of upset about it because it was the only non A that I got at this university, but I don't know, it is what it is. The next class I took was operating systems. Probably one of the coolest classes I took at this university. Um, a lot of it had to do with the fact that we had a really good professor. And this is something that I noticed a lot was the better the professor, uh, usually the more interesting the class was and the more like, more intrigued I was and more engaged I was with it. So yeah, this class was learning about uh, inter-process communications. It was learning about like CPU scheduling, how, how the CPU decides which processes to run and when to run them. Issues in memory management, things like virtual memory, how that works. And then we just had a few programming projects. Like one of the projects was we had to build our own shell and C. That was a really, uh, that was a fun one. We used this book, Operating System Concepts, which is like, it's a pretty popular book. It's some people call it the dinosaur book, but it's a popular operating systems book that uh, a lot of universities use. All right, and finally, summer quarter, I took automata and formal languages. I believe they now just call it theory of computation. So in this, we learned about uh, context-free languages, grammars, Turing machines, Turing completeness, basically learning how computers work from a theoretical standpoint. So that was the final class that I took to get into grad school. Uh, let's talk about applications. So for the application, I needed three letters of recommendation, um, which I, it was pretty easy because I just asked the professors and I had done well in most of my classes and they all knew me because I went to all their office hours. I highly recommend going to your professor's office hours. Not only is it easier to get a letter of recommendation, uh, you just get invaluable information about the course. You know, they were really, really able to clear up any questions I had about any assignments. It's basically like getting a free private tutor where the tutor is the person who's testing you. And I definitely would not have done as well in my classes if I had not gone to a lot of office hours. So I applied to a few schools. Uh, I got into Cal State East Bay. I got into San Francisco State. I actually accepted San Francisco State's offer because uh, I hadn't heard back from Cal Poly yet and I assumed I didn't get in. I even met face to face with the grad coordinator there. We talked about the program. And then I got into Cal Poly and just you know, thought about it for a while, but I decided that ultimately that going there was my best option. So yeah, that's my journey of getting into grad school. It was a hell of a journey, but it was awesome. I mean, it was definitely scary because I might've done all that work and not gotten in anywhere. And then I would have really did had no backup plan, but I think that's why I made it exciting because I knew I couldn't fail. And yeah, it was just really like one of the best experiences. And yeah, you know, looking back on it now, it was actually more fun and I was happier while I was working towards my goal of getting the degree than when I actually got the degree. Because once you have a degree, then it's like, okay, you start working and then kind of gets into like this repetitive thing where it's more about, you know, you're working for a company and it's all just about making money for the company. But when you're in school, you're kind of like improving yourself. So yeah, I think just in life in general, it's more about the journey, you know, it's not about the destination. And yeah, I mean, there were, there were a lot of things that I could have said along the way. I could have made excuses. I had pe people tell me not to do it because they thought it was gonna be too hard and I'm glad I didn't listen to them. You know, I could have said, hey, I'm quitting my job. I'm not gonna be making money for years, but trust me, I ended up making like all the back within the first couple of years of a, having a software engineering salary. So, you know, I really had to make it happen. No one told me to do it. So if you're thinking about it, 
I don't know. What's your excuse, guys? What's your excuse? <laughs> all right, that's gonna be all for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, please make sure you hit the like button. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.